was also speaking prophetically uh, from the cross. You know, we have such a wonderful Lord and Savior, and I, I believe he was saying to Mary, this is what I believe he was saying to her heart. He was saying, uh, Mother, this is not the end. This is just the beginning. And one day you're going to look in the eyes of John, and you're going to see me looking back at you through John's eyes. Woman, behold your son. Your son is going to be living in John. And you know, that is the plan for all of us, to let this new Jesus kind of love flow through each and every one of us. That's what it's all about, this uh, agape love. As the, the verse that uh, Chris mentioned, uh, uh, John chapter 12, verse 34, I believe it is. He said, uh, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this, all will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. And so he's given us a new commandment, and there's a new word in the classic Greek to describe this new kind of love, agape, that didn't appear until the time of Christ. And it's this unconditional love that is best defined by the love that Jesus displayed when he went to the cross and gave his life for all of us. Jesus said, greater love is no man, greater agape has no man than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. And he called all of us his friends when he went to the cross for us. And so he was speaking also prophetically to his uh, mother, saying that he was going to be living through John. Then verse 28, after this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, said, I thirst. And he was thirsting for all humanity. <laughs> Verse 29, Now a vessel full of sour wine was sitting there, and they filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a hyssop, and put it to his mouth. So when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished. And bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. And so he, he, he drank the sour wine for all of us, for all of humanity. And he said, it is finished. You know, the, those words, it is finished, are found on receipts that have been uh, excavated over in uh, Israel. And uh, it is finished also means paid in full. So he was not only saying it is finished, but that it's paid in full. And I was thinking before we partake of the Lord's Supper together, we should think of, first of all, what is paid in full? What was paid in full for us when Jesus uh, died on the cross for us? Well, we can't, so many wonderful blessings, we can't name them all tonight. But as I touch on some of these, I pray that uh, there'll be those that are here or, or within the hearing of my voice, watching by internet, that will believe God for that area tonight as they partake of the Lord's Supper together. Well, first of all, is paid in full for us to receive eternal life. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Think of the blood of Jesus, of the, the Lamb of God without spot and without blemish. There's no other blood that could have paid the price for us to have eternal life. As uh, Chris mentioned, he could have called on 12 legions of angels if he had wanted to. But he didn't. He wanted to die for us and take the judgment for our sins on that cross at Calvary. And so the work for us to receive eternal life was finished when he died on the cross. And think about the blood that was shed by Jesus on the cross. Jesus could have lived forever in the, in the uh, state he was in had he wanted to because there was no death in his blood. When man sinned, uh, death entered his blood. But this man, Jesus, he's all God and all man. This man, Jesus, never sinned. There was no death in his blood, only eternal life. And when he made the decision to allow that precious blood of the Lamb of God without spot and without blemish to be poured out for us, it was the perfect, the only sacrifice for us to receive eternal life. The only blood that qualified, that's ever qualified for us to receive eternal life. This blood of Jesus. 
Amen. That contained no death. Hallelujah. Just see law. Pause and think about that for a while. The perfect sacrifice for us. And when we accept him as our personal Lord and Savior, you can look over in John chapter 3, John chapter 5. We receive eternal life then. The moment we choose Jesus, eternal life begins to dwell in us. Amen. We're not waiting to die to receive eternal life. If we've accepted Jesus as our personal Lord and Savior, we already have eternal life. The price has been paid in full. Heaven, some of heaven's living in us. The Holy Spirit's living in us. Amen. Get excited about this. So the, uh, the, it's paid in full for us to receive eternal life. The price was paid in full for the forgiveness of our sins. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. The perfect sacrifice for us to receive forgiveness. There's no reason anyone should walk around with guilt and uh, with sin having dominion over them in their lives anymore because this perfect sacrifice has been made. Amen. Glory to God. If you've got sin in your life, no one's perfect. We'll have time to examine ourselves. And if the, if the Holy Spirit shows us that we've done anything that's brought displeasure to Him, then the throne room of God's grace is always open. And it's open tonight. And as we uh, drink from the cup, we'll drink the sweetness of forgiveness and taste the sweetness of forgiveness with the palate of faith as we drink from the cup. Amen. And so what we're about to do is, is not just something we do uh, as a ritual. We do it as an act of faith. We partake of the Lord's Supper as an act of faith. And when we drink from that cup, we're drinking by faith and tasting with the palate of faith. Amen. The sweetness of forgiveness. Well, not only our forgiveness, we can forgive others. Amen. We can do it. You say, well, I just don't think I can. You can. You can make a decision to do it. Start with the rudder of your mouth and say, I choose to forgive that person. And then just, you know, God will meet you wherever you are. I'm, I've gone to bed at night where, you know, all of us get bruised in life. We go through life. And sometimes people not even meaning, sometimes not even realizing will uh, hurt you and bruise you. I've gone to bed at night uh, knowing I had unforgiveness in my heart and just saying, oh, Lord, I, I'm, I'm, I'm feel bruised, I feel beat up, but I choose to forgive that person in Jesus' name and may the words of my mouth become truth in my heart. God will meet you right where you are. And uh, you know what? I wake up in the morning feeling okay. I can think about that person without having bad feelings, without feeling hurt. <laughs> Amen. Thank God for the blood of Jesus. Someone uh, said uh, having unforgiveness is like drinking poison and expecting your enemy to die. It's just uh, no point in it. Amen. <laughs> he paid the price for us to have peace. Paid in full. It's been paid in full, folks. By the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross at Calvary. We're going to be talking about the resurrection on uh, Sunday, and you can't really talk about the sacrifice without the resurrection. One, one thing that's very important about the resurrection is that was God accepting the sacrifice of His Son, Jesus, for us. God acknowledging that it's been paid in full. Amen. But uh, it's paid in full for us to receive peace. We don't have to go around worrying. Amen. We can have the peace of Christ which surpasses all understanding. Instead of worry warts, we can become prayer warriors. He's given us an alternative to worry. He said, be anxious for nothing in Philippians 4, I believe about verse 6. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God in the peace of God which surpasses all understanding. Will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are, are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there's anything of uh, praise worthy. If there's any, anything of good report, meditate. Think on these things. So we can choose to have peace because of the blood of Jesus and the work that He did on the cross at Calvary. Amen. We just have to choose it. If, you're, if you've been worried about things, and, you, uh, and if you're watching by internet and been worried about things, make a decision right now that as you 
uh, eat of that bread and drink from that cup that you're eating and drinking peace in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, healing. The price has been paid in full for our healing. If you're here tonight and uh, you need healing in your body, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And you know, one way to understand the gospel of Jesus Christ, you know, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are referred to as the gospel of Matthew, the gospel of Mark, the gospel of Luke, the gospel of John, the good news uh, about Jesus. Well, what you see Jesus doing on the way to the cross in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, what do you see him doing? Forgiving sinners. You see him uh, uh, touching the untouchable, uh, healing the sick, forgiving people of their sins, delivering demoniacs. You see him doing all these wonderful works. Uh, know that he went to the cross so that every generation can have those same blessings. Amen. He said, except the seed falls to the ground and dies, it won't bear much fruit. But if it falls to the ground and dies, it'll bear much fruit. And so he gave himself as a seed for us so that we could have these blessings in our generation. And he's here with us. Where two or more are gathered in his name, he's there in the midst of them. Jesus is here with us tonight, ready to touch and heal the sick. He took those stripes on his back and carried them to the cross for our healing. Amen. Uh, let's talk about it is finished. We, we mentioned that not only uh, does it mean paid in full, just like was, it, the same words were on the receipts of that day, some of the ceramic receipts that they have, clay receipts that they've excavated have those same words on them. But Jesus said it is finished. What is finished? Think of some of the things, and, and let's believe God that these things are finished in our lives. The fear of death is finished. You know, people walk around fearing uh, dying. We don't have to be afraid of dying. As we, we get older, He took the sting of death. Amen. We just, when, when we die, we just change addresses and step into His glory. Amen. Amen. Paul said to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. A proverb says, for surely there is a hereafter and your hope will not be cut off. We don't, yes, it's appointed unto man once to die, but we don't have to fear that dying. It's, it's not a defeat, it's a graduation. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. The fear of death is finished. Amen. Fear of going to hell is finished. Amen. Thank God when you receive Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior and accept Him. You know, we need, th as we partake of the Lord's Supper tonight, we're reminded that we don't get saved through religious works. We receive a relationship with God through His Son, with God the Father through His Son, Jesus. When we choose Jesus as our personal Lord and Savior, God's not limited by our weaknesses, but He is limited by our, cho by our choices. And if we'll choose Jesus, then we can know that we know that we know that we are not going to hell, but we're going to heaven when we die. We don't have to fear going to hell. Isn't that good? Well, how can you measure that by money? Money couldn't buy this. You can take the wealthiest man in the world and if he's afraid of going to hell, he, he's poor compared to all of us here. Amen. We don't have to fear going to hell. We don't, you know, what else is finished is the dominion of sin. There's, we should not let sin have dominion over us in any area of our lives. And I know there's not a person here that hasn't made a mistake since they gotten saved, but God's grace is always there and He forgives us of our sins. But also, if we'll turn our hearts to Him and uh, feed our faith with the Word of God and uh, fill ourselves up with Him, stay full of full of God every day. Uh, he'll deliver us from the dominion of sin no matter what it is. Amen. If a person's fighting addictions, they can be delivered from those addictions through the power of Jesus Christ. And so, it, it, but if you're fighting the dominion of sin in any area of your life, then believe God that that dominion is going to be broken off of you tonight as we partake of the Lord's Supper together. Amen. That uh, uh, just freedom of 
it, it is finished. A fear is finished in our lives. Worrying and fear is over. It's finished. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Uh, 2 Timothy 1, 7. Praise God. We don't have to yield to that spirit of fear. We can yield to the power of the Holy Spirit, to the love of God, and, and declare that we do have a sound mind. And when the enemy tries to attack our minds, we've got the instructions in God's Word on how to appropriate our new covenant. Uh, in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse uh, 4, Paul said, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Yes. Glory to Jesus. Glory. So when the enemy tries to put fearful thoughts on our mind, we can say, No, devil! No, in Jesus' name. I bind you. I cast you out of my thoughts. I have a sound mind. I know that God loves me. Amen. God is for me. Who can be against me? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him freely give us all things? Praise the Lord. If you're in fear of lack, that's a verse out of Romans 8 that you can seize on. Thank God for this covenant. Amen. And he didn't leave us without a textbook. We've got a textbook. We're in the school of the Holy Spirit. And this is our textbook, the Bible, the Word of God. You know, it's finished. I think of my life, uh, one thing that was finished after I got saved, I was a, 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 made a lot of money in the oil business, and y'all have all heard my testimony. I'm not going to go through that. But uh, Shar and I had really gotten into, some people call it the keeping up with the Joneses. You know, just trying to, we, I had to have all the most expensive suits, and I had a, a diamond pinky ring that cost $55,000, and I wore, y'all should have seen me, I was a mess. Uh, but uh, thank God, you know, there's nothing, you know, for a person, that's, if they have to have that, I guess that's their business. But, you know, uh, Shar became a professional shopper, and she had all the latest fashions. And, uh, you know, I'm not against people wearing nice clothes, and we're not against jewelry. But I got delivered from, the, uh, from cabin to keep up with the Joneses. We were keeping up with the Joneses so much, I think we became the Joneses over there in Kingwood, and everybody was trying to keep up with us. But uh, it's just a, a, a piece that comes from being delivered from thinking you have to keep up with the Joneses. You know what I mean by that? With all the latest fads. I'm free. Glory to God. I, I, I just uh, wear what I feel like wearing. I like to get the best sales on things, and... And uh, I, I, I had all the luxury cars and the, the Cadillacs and Mercedes and all that, and I'm not condemning people that drive those, but uh, we were driving them because we felt like that's what we, was required of us in our station of life and so forth. I purposely drive a Toyota Camry today because I feel free driving a Toyota Camry. I'm not keeping up with the Joneses anymore. Amen? Amen. You know, I... You know, people get into this in the body of Christ. I'm amazed. I got saved and uh, I noticed in the body of Christ that people can get out of balance and they get to keeping up with the Joneses, even in church, thinking they got to have a Lexus and all this. Well, if you got, I don't want to, listen, I'm not condemning anybody that drives a Lexus. If you drive one, more power to you. You know, that's fine. But, but uh, I'm just saying there's a freedom from being delivered from thinking you have to keep up with the Joneses. You heard about this one man he, uh, he had his BMW and he drove it over a cliff, had an accident, and during the accident he was thrown free, but it, it, his arm was severed. And he was standing there looking at his, and then after, after the wreck, his car burst into flames, but he was thrown free with a severed arm. And a man came by and he was standing there gripping his arm saying, oh, my BMW, my BMW, my BMW. And that man came up to him and said, man, uh, don't you realize, forget about that BMW, don't you realize you've lost your arm, your arm's been severed? And he said, oh, my Rolex watch, my Rolex watch. You know, people can get so into keeping up with the Joneses that it just, they become slaves, you know, of materialism. And you know, while God wants to bless us and we're all for God blessing us, 
but we don't want to be slaves of materialism. We're free. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Sometimes people thinking they got to keep up with the Joneses, they get in all kinds of debt because they, they, they think they've got to have the latest luxury automobile and they can't afford one. So they get one, then they go in debt and, uh, you know, they just get off base. And we don't have to do that, folks. The Lord doesn't require that. Us. He loves us. He loves us. Amen. If you're driving a 25-year-old car, He still loves you. He loves you just as much as if you were driving a BMW or a Mercedes. Doesn't matter to God. He loves you. Amen. Hallelujah. So it is finished. Well, I, I've covered some things just that the Holy Spirit put on my heart. You can probably think of a lot of other things. But, you know, before we partake of the Lord's Supper together, I want us to, uh, let's be sure that we uh, don't come to the table in an attitude of self-righteousness, but that we come on the basis of the works of Jesus, on the basis of His merits rather than our own merits because it's all about what He did uh, uh, at Calvary. That's what we're remembering as we partake of the Lord's Supper. And so I'd like to ask all of us here and those watching by internet uh, to bow your heads and uh, in an attitude of prayer and with a reverence for God, I'd like to ask everyone within the hearing of my voice to look into your heart and ask yourself this question, have I truly accepted Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior? Have I done that with sincerity of heart and the conviction of faith? Have I really made that irrevocable decision the, to accept Jesus? Have I, have I made that surrender to Him as my personal Lord and Savior? And if you're saying within your heart, you know, to be honest with myself and with God, I'm not sure I've really, really opened my heart up to Jesus. I'm not even sure I would go to heaven if I were to die tonight. I need prayer. Pray for me. If that's you, I want you to raise your hand up high. If you're saying, you know, I'm not sure I'm right with God. I'm not ready to meet God. I need prayer. Pray for me. Just lift it up high wherever you are. If you're watching by internet, the Lord sees your hand when you lift it up. We're just asking you to do that as a, 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 to put some action with your faith. And I want to ask us all to stand and let's all say this prayer. You know, even if you've been saved for many years, uh, uh, there could be someone, and we know that people are getting saved uh, through the uh, uh, internet. There, I'll, I'll talk about it after we go offline, but there's one ministry, we, we got some more reports today, and the total number of people saved in this country watching our services is up to about 1,500 people since uh, February 15th. And uh, this is in a, th let's give Jesus a hand clap. And this is in a country that, uh, where there's severe persecution for preaching the gospel, they're showing these services. They're, they're downloading them and showing them and getting really good results. And so, you know, uh, there's, we, we all, only God knows how many are going to be saying this prayer with us. So let's all say it to encourage that person that may be saying it for the first time. Amen. Say this with me. Internet audience, say this with me. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father have, mercy me, have mercy on me, a sinner. I repent for all my sins and ask your forgiveness. I open my heart up to your Son, Jesus Christ. Jesus, come into my heart. I accept you now as my personal Lord and Savior. I declare I'm saved. I'm born again. I'm forgiven. I have a new beginning. I have a new lease on life. I'm a new creation. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Let's give Jesus a hand clap. You may be seated. And uh, Joe is going to pass out the uh, bread and the uh, cups. And uh, we invite the internet audience to do this with us as we remember Jesus and appropriate the new covenant in our lives. This is a tangible point of contact that uh, a God-approved, Bible-approved point of contact given in the Scriptures for us to release our faith concerning the new covenant promises. Amen. Hallelujah. We use the Jewish uh, matzo, uh, unleavened bread or crackers, and it has the uh, stripes on it. By His stripes we were healed. It has the uh, holes in it. He was wounded for our transgressions. What did I, Isaiah 
say, uh, say he said, Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. The chastisement of, uh, for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. And Peter, looking back to the cross, said, By his stripes we were healed. Amen. So uh, when you chew the bread, and we'll do it all together here, but when you uh, chew the bread, chew healing with the molars of faith. It has dark spots on it, the uh, bread does. Y you know, he not only bled externally, he bled internally. That's what those dark spots uh, represent. And uh, he's here to heal the brokenhearted. Maybe you've been bruised. He was bruised for our iniquities. And sometimes we hurt ourselves, but sometimes others hurt us, don't they? And we've been bruised. Maybe your heart's been broken. Believe God for the healing of your broken heart. Think of those bruises and believe God for the healing of any bruises in your life. Amen. Let's, uh, also, some of these things we talked about, it's been paid in full for eternal life. We've already, you know, let's taste the sweetness of eternal life as we drink from the cup. For forgiveness of sins. Uh, he's here to forgive and we can also believe God to forgive any that have sinned against us when we partake of the Lord's Supper for peace in our life. Amen. We don't have to go around worried. Hallelujah. God loves every one of us. Amen. You know, He's got a big, uh, on His refrigerator door in heaven, He's got a picture of you on His, one of those magnetized pictures on His refrigerator door in heaven. I believe that. You know, He's got every one of us on, our, on His heart as though, there was, as though there was only one of us. He can do that. Even though there are millions and millions of believers he, he, he thinks of every one of us individually just as if we were the only one because He's omniscient, all-knowing. He's omnipresent. He can do that because He's God. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. The, uh, if you've been afraid of going to hell or afraid of dying, that's, say, that's, you know, say to yourself, that's finished. I'm, I'm, I'm through with that. I'm not afraid of dying. I'm not afraid of going to hell. We do believe that God will give everyone here long uh, full lives in Jesus' name. Amen. That every person here will live out every day of, that's appointed for them. Also look on this as you partake of the bread and you, you look at those stripes. Look on it as, uh, and, it, and when you drink from the cup, you know, think of it as being immunized against sickness and disease and against oppression. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, uh, Let's uh, partake of the bread and remember whatever the promise is you're believing God for. Remember, Jesus paid the price and chew this bread with the molars of faith. And now let's lift up the cup. And, oh, thank you, Jesus, for the sweetness of the new covenant. Let's remember what he did. Remember his blood. If you need to forgive anyone, forgive them now. If you need forgiveness, receive it now. Hallelujah. If you've been fighting guilt over something, allow him to set you free. Amen. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who do not walk according to the flesh but according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Romans uh, chapter 8, this verses 1 and 2. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's just lift our hands and the ushers will be taking up the cups. Let's just lift up our hands. We praise you, Jesus. We thank you. Think of that song that our brother Chris sang tonight, Lord. We remember you. We remember what you did for us. We love you. We thank you for your great love that you have for us. And we believe. We believe in you. We trust in you. We believe every, everything that the Bible says is the truth. And we believe that the description of the promises that we have in this covenant belong to us. And we appropriate them now in our lives. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I just really hear the Holy Spirit saying in my heart that people here, and it could be those watching by internet too, are being set free from stress tonight. That there were some that came to this service experiencing stress over different things. You've got a tangible peace. Just hold on to that. Take it with you. 
when you go home because Jesus is with you everywhere you go. Amen. You've got peace. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Let's just continue to worship him. We don't want to close. And hallelujah. Thank you until the, we're sure the Holy Spirit is done. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I just, oh, I, I just got a, um, I believe this is the Holy Spirit uh, saying there's someone with a problem in their neck area and he's wanting to touch and heal that person, either here or watching by internet. If you're here, just uh, put a hand on your neck and raise the other hand in praise to the Lord. I believe he's going to heal you in the name of Jesus. If you're watching by internet, we ask you to do the same thing. Just put a hand on your neck and lift the other hand in praise to the Lord. Jesus is the healer. I'm just uh, obeying the Holy Spirit. And, uh, but he is the healer. Amen. We just say, be whole in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for healing these necks, these neck areas in Jesus' name. Those that are here and those that are watching by internet, we give you all the glory, Lord. Hallelujah. You're the healer. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Joe, if you would get uh, the porters and be taking them on over. We do have a, a baptismal, two baptismals tonight. Uh, I always call him Rocky, but Philip Porter and Laura Porter are being baptized in water and uh, they rededicated their lives to Jesus and uh, last at the Palm Sunday service. And if you'll just follow Joe over there. So uh, I'm going to take my coat off here and uh, we're going to just all rejoice over this baptism. Amen. These baptisms. Praise the Lord. Which one's going first? No, you got to come on in here. <laughs> All right. Lord, why don't you come on? Ladies first. Yeah. Just put them. You know, Jesus uh, said, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all. He said this in Matthew 28. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. He, he, uh, amen. T he says, Teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. And so, uh, Laura Porter, you might want to hold your nose. You ready? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Laura Porter, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. I do this by the authority that is in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's give Jesus a hand clap. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. How you feel, Laura? I feel great. All right. <laughs> oh, you're gonna you're gonna really enjoy this. I'm, I've been looking forward to putting you on. Come on over. Here. <laughs> I'm just kidding you, Rocky. Come on. This is an honor to be baptizing you. Watch your step now. Yeah, if I need to drive around in here and cool off. Uh, this water's warm now. The water was cold. No, <laughs> it's warm. Come on in. Oh, Leave me. I can't get yeah, I come back far. No, no. <laughs> I can't. Wait a minute, my foot only goes. Help him get his, uh, let's see. I'll hold. Oh, he got it. Okay. Okay. All right. You made it. Uh, finally. <laughs> it's a little warmer than I thought it was. I need to turn around, though. Yep, yeah, turn around and sorry. face, face Laura. You know what you said? You've been waiting to get me to do it. Don't worry, Laura. This is nice and warm sit, right here. Yeah, sit down now. Sit down. Okay. okay, you may want to hold your nose. I just want to hold on to this. No, no, you can't hold on to that. Got to move your elbow there. There you go. Okay, Philip Porter.
I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. This I do by the authority that is in the name of Jesus. All right, we got him all the way under. There we go. <laughs> Amen. 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 We're proud of you, Rocky. Step up. Watch your step. No, no, no. You're not going to fall. <laughs> there you go. Got a good grip on? Okay. Watch your step on. Okay. Well, let's give Jesus a hand clap and give them a hand clap. Now, there's a puddle of water down here, so be careful when you when your uh, foot hits the floor there. All right. Hallelujah. <laughs> well, let's all uh, stand to our feet, and thank you so much for coming out. We'd have some first-time visitors here. We have a Ricky and Amelia, or Rick and Amelia, that is. And uh, they uh, uh, read my book, The Healing Leaf, and uh, decided to come visit the church. So we're so glad that they came. And be sure and visit with them and let them know how welcome they are here. And we may have some refreshments left. If we do, please uh, partake of them. And God bless you. God's angels go with you. Go out and win the world for Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you.